leaks and today we got a pretty big info drop of leaks for warzone 2 so we're going to be talking about those but before that i did want to touch on a couple things that are coming from an official source the first thing is relating to warzone mobile this has now been officially announced and confirmed and apparently we're going to be getting some more information on this at call of duty next next week and the main thing that's interesting to talk about with this is with the link to the warzone mobile website there is a description and in this it mentions shared progression now at this point we don't have enough information to know exactly what this is sharing progression with is it going to be like the console and pc version of call of duty like modern warfare 2 and warzone 2 or is it sharing progression with mobile is it sharing player progression or maybe just weapon progression we really don't know at this point that's all up in the air but one thing i did want to address here i think a lot of people misread this and jumped to the conclusion that this means cross play which would mean like warzone mobile players are in the same game as warzone 2 players and I highly doubt that's going to be the case. There's no actual mention of that anywhere and no hints of that either. So I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't think Warzone Mobile is going to be able to run Warzone 2, especially with the... Stellt euch mal vor, ihr spielt mit 240 FPS, 120 FOV, mit der Razer Shark, Shark Razer LED Light 300 Euro Maus und der... 1160 Euro GeForce Experience Ballermich Ballermich Tastatur auf einem 27 Zoll 1440 Monitor gegen so einen Knaben, der auf dem Bus wartet, auf dem Smartphone. Stell dir das mal vor. Wie soll das denn funktionieren? Also da kann man sich eigentlich schon fast selbst denken, dass das nicht passieren wird. Selbst mit Skill-Based Matchmaking. Der, der Brick kann auch keine 3 Meter gerade auslaufen, bevor die 100 Schüsse erreichen. Now let's move into these Warzone 2 Leaks. Now these ones are coming from Metaphor, who I'm not overly familiar with. I'll be honest right up front. I've seen his name around the community. I've heard of leaks from him in the past. But I'm not 100% sure about his track record when it comes to leaks. So just keep that in mind. He does claim that he has seen gameplay of Warzone 2 as well as DMZ. And I tend to believe him. Let's dive into this. In the first of several tweets here, he mentions that NPCs or AI players are going to be in the map randomly. In the first of several tweets here, he mentions that NPCs or AI players are going to be in the map randomly, which was a bit surprising to me. I thought they would only be in the stronghold areas that have been leaked in the past, but it seems like they can just be anywhere on the map. And just to add to this, in the pre-revealed brief for Modern Warfare 2 that I managed to attend several months back, the devs did mention that they were toying around with up to 300 AI players at once in Warzone 2. So this does seem quite likely. Additionally, we're going to have container-based looting at aber sollen die NPCs auf der Karte die Lobby auffüllen oder haben die irgendeinen bestimmten Sinn? Weil ich habe einfach gar keinen Bock mit Bots in der Lobby zu spielen. As well as floor loot. So you'll have the standard floor loot laying around. However, with those supply boxes you find around the map, unlike in the current version of Warzone where you open them and all the items just fly out of there and land on the ground and then you take what you want, this is apparently going to be an inventory based system where it opens up a menu when you open the crate and then you select the items that you want to transfer to your inventory, kind of like we saw in Blackout, for instance. Und wieder haben die PC-Spieler mit Maus und Tastatur den fettesten Vorteil der Welt dabei. Wisst ihr eigentlich, wie kacke das ist für Konsolenspieler? Hall Shockwave. Wisst ihr, wie kacke es für Konsolenspieler ist, so ein Inventar mit einem Controller aufzumachen? In Blackout hat das locker 10 Sekunden gedauert, bis man fertig war. Und Maus und Tastatur macht bei so einem Loadout einfach zack, 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 das geht darüber, zack, zack. Und der Controller-Spieler, so wie ich, Rüber, ich roll, ich roll, ich roll, da will ich hin. Oh nein, da wollte ich nicht, das ist absolut scheiße. Also wirklich, diese Loadout-Idee hasse ich jetzt schon. Oder Inventar-Idee. Inventar auf Controller hat noch in keinem Game gut funktioniert bisher. And with this, I'm not overly surprised because it seems likely they want to keep the mechanics consistent between Warzone 2 and their extraction style mode, which is DMZ. But at the same time, I'm a little skeptical here. I just hope it's really easy to navigate these inventories with a controller. Because that's a big area where mouse and keyboard always has a big advantage over controller players. Because they can just really quickly click on the items we want. Whereas with a controller, you typically have to like scroll around to get to the item that you actually want. Additionally, with this leak, it looks like backpacks are returning, so you'll get different size or different tiers of backpacks that you can loot on the map, and that allows you to carry more items. 
There's also new contracts, and the helicopter from High Rise will be usable. And it has already been kind of teased that High Rise will be in the Warzone 2 map. We actually saw it in the reveal trailer. Rucksäcke finde ich jetzt auch nicht so geil. Also Rucksäcke ist halt wieder so RNG in dem Game. Hast du Glück, findest du einen großen und bist halt wirklich powerful unterwegs, weil du sehr viel einsammeln kannst. Hast du Pech, hast du wenig dabei, kannst dich kaum wehren. Also ich finde so Rucksack immer, ich weiß nicht, es sind so ein, zwei Entscheidungen, die irgendwie wieder zurückgehen zu Blackout. Und Blackout war super, aber hat halt viele Sachen auch falsch gemacht, weil es das erste Mal war, die in Warzone besser laufen. Right here. After that, there's no more toxic gas, apparently, and instead, <coughs> it's going to be replaced with a dust storm. So, that sounds kind of interesting. I'm not overly concerned about that. The main thing that I'm curious to see here, though, is visibility, both looking into the dust storm from the safe area. If somebody's lagging behind and they're hiding in the dust, can you see them? And then what about the other way around? If you're in the dust, how much will you be able to see? And then finally from this tweet, something that's already been confirmed in the past, but he's just sort of restating here. Tires can be shot out from cars, and there's also the potential to repair cars. I should also mention that the devs have confirmed with us in that private briefing that you can shoot off doors and stuff with vehicles as well. You can actually shred vehicles, and that makes it a lot easier to shoot the people that are inside. So it looks like there's going to be a lot more counterplay to the vehicles. Now, continuing on to his next tweet, you can apparently shoot out of cars with 100% accuracy. So you can aim down sight while in a car and shoot at people that are outside of the car. And I actually did see a little bit of gameplay that showed this off from a campaign mission, again, in that Behind Closed Doors event. I'm sure you guys will see this next week with the Call of Duty Next event. But that's pretty interesting. It's worth noting, if you are the driver, though, you lose control of the vehicle while you're aiming and shooting. Obviously, your hands aren't on the wheel. After that, he mentions slide cancelling won't be in the beta of the game, but apparently they have the option to turn it on or off, so they're just going to wait for feedback on that. And that's interesting. He did mention beta. This is the first I've heard of the potential for a Warzone 2. Sie haben Slide Canceling jetzt in der Version mittlerweile wieder drinne und können es jederzeit rein und rausnehmen. Slide Canceling ist von Anfang an in Warzone ein Bug gewesen, der einfach nie behoben wurde, weil die Community irgendwann das Ganze adaptiert hat und sich im Vorteil draus gezogen hat. Aber Dutzende Pro Player aus der amerikanischen Gaming Szene haben sich schon darüber beschwert, weil das bei dem Zocken von denen so viel Probleme mit ihren Händen gemacht hat, dass das schon gesundheitlich schädlich war. Ja, also ich denke, Pro, dass du auf jeden Fall zwei Waffen haben kannst, unabhängig vom Rucksack. Aber wenn es da nachher ist, dass du deswegen keine Nades dabei haben kannst, weil du Verbände vielleicht brauchst oder ähm, was auch immer da nachher Sache ist, ist das schon übel. Beta. I personally don't think that's going to be happening. But I guess time will tell. We'll have to wait to that Call of Duty next event. I'm sure they'll be clearing up a lot of the questions that we have right now. Now, on top of that, referring to vehicles, cars will have limited fuel. And he says two minutes with a question mark. So roughly two minutes of drive time. Hmm. However, there's automatic refuel slash repair gas stations on the map. And you just have to drive near them. And apparently it will refill the fuel and repair your vehicle. So any shot tires or doors that have been removed, it should just automatically do that for you. And I actually kind of like the idea behind that. It looks like they're really fleshing out vehicle play and trying to add a lot more depth as well as counterplay in there. And so far, this is all sounding great to me. And Ob ich jetzt Autos auffüllen muss oder nicht, ist mir persönlich ehrlich gesagt relativ egal. Ich glaube, ich bin meinem ganzen Warzone-Leben noch nicht länger als zwei Minuten mit dem Auto durch die Gegend gefahren. Außer ich hatte einen Big Bounty Contract. As for his next tweet, he says there are plenty of new vehicles and the only returning one apparently at this point is the ATV based on what he's seen. So with this, there's apparently a new Hummer type SUV, likely like the ones we saw in the reveal trailer. We've got a hatchback civilian car, which is apparently weak but fast. And then there's different choppers. One of the helicopters they've mentioned, we can actually set to hover and then we can shoot out of that even as a solo player. That's something the devs talked about with us in that event as well. On top of that, he mentions there are three new contracts, but he can't quite tell what they are. They're just new. And he mentioned that recons, bounties, and most wanted contracts will be returning in Warzone 2. Now, finally, in his last tweet regarding these leaks, there is apparently no new news on a Rebirth or Small Style map, which is interesting. Hopefully, they do have one. I know a lot of people really gravitate toward those smaller maps. He was also told that they're already developing another map that's designed for like big battle royale. So I don't know if they're designing that for maybe next year or what their plan is with it, but that's interesting to hear. 
There's also a new CQ contract, but we don't really have any details on that. And then there's a modern city point of interest, AKA downtown. And he mentions that it literally looks like a section of the GTA map and it's extremely detailed and looks amazing. And there we go. Ich habe schon das Gefühl, dass die Entscheidungsträger da dieses Jahr sehr, sehr sicher sind, dass sie mit der Warzone Map in Schwarze treffen, weil ich behaupte das jetzt einfach mal, kann jeder seine eigene Meinung zu haben, hätten wir kein Rebirth Island gehabt, so wie es jetzt ist, oder mit Ausnahme der ein, zwei Änderungen eigentlich war, glaube ich nicht, dass noch viele Leute überhaupt sich bei COD dieses Jahr eingeloggt hätten, weil Caldera einfach halt nirgendwo gut ankam. Und wenn die neue Battle Royale Karte scheiße ist und es kein, kein Rebirth als, als Alternative für viele Creator und Spieler gibt, sehe ich viele Leute es ja was anderes machen. Aber auch mit dem Auto, ich weiß nicht, ob das jetzt so geil ist, dass man mit 100% aus dem Auto zielen kann, während man fährt, aber das mit dem Tanken, Reifen kaputt machen, reparieren. Also ich habe generell das Gefühl, das ist nur mein Gefühl gerade, dass sie sich zumindest im Gegensatz zur Zeit von Verdun zu Caldera wenigstens überlegt haben, was man Frisches reinbringen kann. Was schon ein besseres Gefühl ist, als deren beste Überlegung war zu Caldera, dass du kein Loadout am Anfang mehr kaufen kannst, was ja grandios geklappt hat und nach vier Wochen wieder gepatcht wurde, weil es <lacht> keiner wollte.